So, um, yeah, we're currently in a short series uh, looking at our culture at Emmanuel. And two weeks ago, when we launched this series, I spoke about church as family. And we unwrapped how it's a deeply held biblical belief for us that God is a loving father. And that's part of who he is fundamentally. He's always been a loving father to his son, Jesus, throughout all eternity. And then by extension, when we choose to follow Jesus, we become loved sons and daughters. And we enter into a family with all the others around the world who trust Jesus. And then we're choosing here to build church locally to that same model as well, believing that's the model that the Bible puts forward for us as church. Not an organisation, not a business, not an institution, but a family is the model uh, for church. So... For us, building as a healthy family is the primary way as well that we're seeking to live out our vision as a church together. So during this series, we're trying to elaborate on that little bit and expand on what the culture might look like within that family context. And we would be, it would be impossible really to cover like everything about the kind of culture we want to go for at Emmanuel, uh, not least because culture's in many ways, something that's better experienced than uh, taught on. However, at the same time, um, if you don't lead into shaping culture, if we don't together lead into shaping the culture of Emmanuel, we'll end up with some kind of culture by default. So it's important to engage with it to some level, but also it's important to recognise uh, that some of it is kind of untangible, almost more experienced than taught on. So within that context of family, we're highlighting three areas of culture that actually we can already see within a manual, and we think it's really important that we fight for these areas to seek to maintain and grow in them. And they are honour, courage, and generosity. So last week we looked at honour, and uh, Jude unpacked uh, three things actually. She unpacked how, like, first of all, it's important to honour God, secondly, it's important to honour ourselves, and thirdly, it's important to honour others, and looked at a biblical model for that. And this morning, we're then going to go on to looking at courage. As I spent uh, kind of time thinking about courage this week, praying about what I was going to talk about, one thing that kept coming to my mind again and again. I was just thinking of Ukraine, really, and just the context there and the courage being shown by many people. So quite a lot's been made in our media by the courage that people have shown. A lot's been made in our media about the courage that Ukrainian President Zelensky has shown, uh, staying in the country for a start when um, he was, by the sounds of it, given the option to uh, be removed from the country. And he's put himself in harm's way, and I think it, it's probably a positive thing that that's been highlighted. But I think I've been particularly drawn to the incredible stories of uh, individual believers and Christians who are demonstrating amazing courage in the face of adversity. Um, I've got on my phone, for example, video clips of uh, believers in our, some of our churches in Ukraine praying together, which I've been uh, told not to share more widely and be really careful what I do with. But it's really inspiring to watch groups of believers part of our wider Catalyst New Frontiers Church family in basements crying out to God for mercy on their nation and just the courage on display. Or we heard on a video we showed last Sunday about the appeal that Vicky was talking about. We heard in that church pastors talking about as they got dispersed from Ukraine that they actually were already believing God was speaking to them about how this dispersal was going to be used for more church plants to be started. And you're just like, I don't think that would be my first thought in that war scenario, thinking about all the church plants that are going to get started. So we've gone beyond thinking about their survival and how God might actually be using this. That's just incredible courage on display. And, and the reality is that there's other people in all kinds of other situations around the world where our brothers and sisters in Christ have to live with great, great courage all the time. And we might not be in one of those situations. We might not be in a situation like our dear brothers and sisters in Ukraine. However, there are still lots of opportunities for each of us to demonstrate courage day in, day out. And one of the things we're actually going to see this morning is that what courage looks like, it will look different for each one of us in different seasons of life. What courage looks like for me at the moment might look very different to what it looks like for you to be courageous. But we still want to seek to build an overall atmosphere, an overall culture here as a church family that encourages us to step out and be courageous. 
So what do we actually mean by courage? Just to take a little bit of a step back. So if we look at the dictionary of Bible themes, it describes it like this. The quality of being able to act bravely under difficulties or in the face of opposition. Being prepared to do dangerous or risky things in obedience to God, in belief that he will strengthen and guard and protect his people. So in some ways the definition is quite similar to how wider society would understand courage. So I think the wider society understanding of courage, for example, would have that aspect of it being the opposite of fear. Um, and in the Bible, that's very true. So whenever the Bible talks about fear not, be of good cheer, be strong and courageous, all of these are commands and encouragements uh, to courageously overcome fears that might be we need to face up to. There's perhaps some exceptions as well, though, about what courage looks like biblically that we're going to come across this morning. One of them would be around obedience and how it looks like being obedient to God for courage rather than seeking to go our own ways or seeking to achieve things for the sake of my own life or my furtherment of my career or whatever it might be. Um, and the other part would be about the source of courage. So I think this is perhaps the most significant when thinking about the definition. So the source of courage when it comes to kind of wider society understanding, I think would largely be about looking within yourself and trying to summon up the courage to achieve something great. Whereas the source of courage for the Christian, courage in the Bible is always seen as strength from God. It's always strength coming from God. He's always the source of what it looks like to be courageous in a godly sense. So that means, although we might uh, actually be really weak, although we might in many senses lack courage, in and through Jesus, we can all experience what it is to be courageous, what it is for God to come and strengthen us. I'm going to base today's talk out of Joshua from the Old Testament, and just to give a quick bit of context, um, we've not been looking at this story in other preachers recently, so just to give a really quick bit of context. Moses, uh, famous leader of God's people, he led God's people out of slavery in Egypt. He'd been the leader of the people of Israel, the people of God in the Old Testament, for 40 years. And then there comes this moment where he hands on the leadership to Joshua. Now, if you think about this from Joshua's perspective, this is probably quite a daunting moment for him as a young leader. Well, perhaps not that young, he'd been around a while by that point. But uh, relatively speaking, a young leader taking on this new role of leading God's people. And as well as knowing he's taking on that role, he's aware as well of the challenges that lie ahead of him as he leads the people into the promised land, knowing that there's both many literal battles, but also spiritual battles that will have to be fought. So in Joshua 1, verses 5 to 9, it says this. This is God speaking over Joshua. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my, mo uh, my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right. Actually, it's not your right, is it? That's you. Uh, right or to your left, um, that may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So here in this passage, God is telling Joshua, not just once, but multiple times, to be strong and courageous. And actually, if you, you go back a little bit further in this story, while Moses was still alive, when Moses commissions Joshua, he also speaks strength and courage over Joshua on three occasions. So there's something really significant about this word over Joshua's life. And Joshua had doubts and fears, just like we all do. He was a normal human, so he had doubts and fears. We can be absolutely sure of that. And the three times that he speaks this strength and courage over, um, three times that the strength and courage gets spoken over him, it's in a different context each time. So something quite significant that we can draw from each of those instances, which 
hopefully will help us today to understand more about courage. So he firstly, uh, God firstly reminds him, I will be with you just like I was with Moses. He secondly is saying that Joshua needs to be careful to obey God and focus on all that God has said. And thirdly, he's simply um, encouraging him to, uh, as a nervous leader, it would seem, that he's going to be with him wherever he goes. So I want to draw from this three reasons um, why we can be strong and courageous in our lives today as we seek to draw up, follow after Jesus. So number one, God's faithfulness over our lives so far. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Important bit of context to recognise is that Joshua got to witness most of that pretty close up because he was being apprenticed by Moses through this whole process, um, raised up as the future leader. I don't know at what point it was actually realised that Joshua was probably going to be the next leader of the people. I don't know if Moses had worked that out before God kind of made that really clear to him or not. But jo Joshua was basically Moses' assistant for a long time. And it seems in that process he was growing and learning how to be a leader. So for us, remembering and celebrating what God has already done in our lives is absolutely vital. It's so easy without care to forget what God has already done. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not always brilliant at this one, to be honest. I think even at the moment, I'm naturally a person who tends to think about what's to come, what's ahead, and focus. Um, sometimes that can be really positive, but the negative side of that is I can recognise all the things that need to get done and end up missing all the good things that have actually already happened and God's achieved. So taking my life at the moment, with the big focus of my life being about planting this church and being involved here, it's very easy for me to just get focused on all the things we haven't yet done or haven't yet achieved and forget to look back and actually celebrate all that God's already done amongst us. So I have to intentionally look back and go, actually, this is amazing, this is incredible. Like, we've started a church during a pandemic and God has built it. Like, it was an initial break of 15 or so adults, and now we're a bit smaller this morning, but now most Sundays we've had more than 50 people. And it's just like, how has God done that? And it's just like incredible, really. And there's so many other things as well, the amazing work that God's been doing in all kinds of people's lives, the impact it's having on our city as each of us live for Jesus day by day. Like just beginning to, you've got to have to look back and go, actually God is already doing something. There is much to be celebrated, there's much to be enjoyed. Yes, there's more to do, but part of the looking ahead needs to be remembering what God's already done. So learning to remember how God has been faithful is vital. And secondly, walking in obedience and love with Jesus. So he says to Moses, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. We can trust if we do this, we can trust that if we walk in obedience, if we seek to actively stay in the love of Jesus, it will lead to us experiencing courage. You know, God loves hearts of obedience. He loves obedience. It's a way for us like, you could say, like, God shows his love to us through what he's done in Jesus, primarily. The primary way we then get to show love back to God is through obedience. It shows our love, our worship, our affection for him. Like, our primary way we worship isn't coming on a Sunday and singing songs. The primary way we worship is living lives in obedience to God. Like, that's what true and spiritual worship looks like, living our whole lives wholeheartedly for God out of obedience to him. God loves obedience. And not only does walking in obedience grow courage, walking in obedience kind of requires courage as well. And increasingly, uh, increasingly in our society, I think that's true. It's kind of a cyclic thing that goes on. I think the more courageous we are in being obedient, the more that grows us and helps us become more courageous. There's kind of some cycle thing going on there. And the reality is, whereas once in our nation, we were part of a Christian majority, it's increasingly true that we're actually now really living in a Christian minority in our nation. So what we're about, what we're living for, is fundamentally opposed really to the ways of the rest of society. I think this is already true, but it seems that the contrast, certainly in my lifetime so far, that contrast has already got starker, and it seems to be becoming increasingly stark. I think we have much to learn actually by looking to Christians around the world who perhaps lived as minorities 
for years and years and years. I think they have much to teach us about what it's looked like to live in a minority. The reality is that it's becoming increasingly challenging to simply, uh, much of the Bible up to hold up, to simply live your life and claim to hold on to the whole truth of the Bible is becoming an increasingly challenging thing to do in our country. It's not anymore what people would necessarily consider a morally good life. So what the rest of society now thinks looks like good morals is, is not actually what the Bible teaches anymore in all kinds of places. And I think that's just becoming increasingly true. So it takes courage to simply choose to live a life where you say, I'm going to try and run my life up to what the Bible teaches. Beyond that as well, it takes courage to live according to um, Jesus when he asks us to step out in faith. It takes courage, doesn't it, when he asks us to step out in faith. And in my experience, actually, when it comes to, say, God's prompting you to do something, or he's asking you to go and speak to someone, or you feel God's like, oh, I just can't pray for that person. It's normally in the moment that we step out that courage seems to come. I don't ever feel very courageous before I actually do it. But I seem to find somehow, in the moment when I choose to step out, that then courage comes. And I remember one time offering to pray for a neighbour of ours um, who had a bad back. He was an absolutely lovely guy, an uh, older guy called Bill. And he's having um, a, a very classic older guy's name, isn't it? Um, <laughs> lovely, lovely guy. I was having a chat with him. He was telling me all about all kinds of challenges in his life, actually. And like, to be honest, almost as soon as he started sharing, I felt the sense of I really should offer to pray for him. And felt particularly I should offer to pray for his back. Um, and like, the conversation went on, and like, the moment passed, and I didn't take that moment to step out. But God's really kind, um, I guess, or on my case, the other way of looking at it. And later the same day, I ended up in a conversation with him again. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to have to do this, aren't I? I wasn't probably going to end up speaking to him again and again until I actually, uh, actually step out and pray for him. So the second time around, I looked at the courage and went for it with praying. And it was very much, that I, I just remember that moment really clearly of feeling really nervous about it. I had no reason to feel so nervous about it, to be honest. He was a lovely guy. He was never going to say anything horrible to me about me offering to pray for him. He was only ever going to be sweet about it. But that's how I felt. But it was, as I stepped out, I felt the courage come. And it was just a great moment. Like, I, I don't think his back was healed. But he met with God really powerfully. He was uh, like very, very emotional. For a guy who was quite stoic, really, in his emotions, he, he was crying quite a lot publicly in front of me. And just he clearly met with God in the moment. And he described it as such himself as well. So when we step out in obedience, it's as we step out that the courage often comes. Don't be surprised if you're still feeling fearful, anxious, or worried ahead of the moment. It's when we step out that the courage normally comes. So walking in obedience and love is another reason that we can have courage. As we step out, he loves to meet us with courage. Uh, thirdly, God is with you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a promise. In spite of all that doubt, in spite of all our fears, in spite of all the times we feel God prompting us to pray for someone and we don't do it, he's loving, he's kind, he's for us. He promises to be with you wherever you go, whatever you do. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And the final point I want to make from Joshua's life kind of very much links to this one as well. And perhaps it's the greatest lesson from Joshua's life that we can take about courage which Joshua's life teaches us as well about the source of courage. So if you look back into the days when he was apprenticing with Moses, when he was his assistant, it says this in Exodus 33, 11, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. I wasn't particularly going to make this point. That's just amazing, isn't it? Like that picture of speaking God face to face as he speaks to one's friend. I often think of that and think, oh, I wish I could have like a relationship with God would look like that. And then I feel God rebuke me a little bit and be like, you do. Don't you get it? You do. No longer do I call you servants, but I've called you a friend. That's what Jesus says. I've called you a friend. We can speak to God like he's our friend. We can interact with God on that level. It's incredible. So um, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, the son of Nun, did not leave the tent. 
So most people didn't go anywhere near this tent. It was like fenced off because it was like a, a really important place where God would meet with Moses on behalf of the people. But most of the people wouldn't get to go there or anywhere near it at all. But Joshua got to go with him. And he made the absolute utmost of that privilege because Moses would go, but he would linger and stay behind in God's presence. And it's an incredible picture, I think, of where courage actually comes from. You see, courage is forged in God's presence. We're in Sheffield, so I had to use the word forged. Um, so courage is forged in God's presence. If godly courage is strength from God himself, not just strength we find from looking within ourselves, then it makes sense, doesn't it? The key to growing our courage, ultimately, lots of these reasons we looked at for courage, perhaps the ultimate one of all to remember is that courage grows in God's presence. Courage grows in God's presence. Courage is forged in his presence. There's a hint as well, isn't there, that Moses was modeling something to Joshua, helped Joshua learn about the importance of encountering God and tallying in his presence. And we all need people and friends as well to help us do that. That's why we're meant to do this together as church family and not just isolating on our own. We need to learn to love his presence. His presence is the gym, if you like, where the muscles of faith and courage really grow. We've got the opportunity tonight to come and join together with others here in this church family and come and worship again. Opportunity for that courage to grow in our hearts. The strength to come and meet us where we're at. Paul in the New Testament speaking to uh, a fearful um, and slightly timid, but at the same time really quite courageous young leader, Timothy says this, for the Spirit of God uh, gave, uh, the Spirit of God, sorry, start that again. For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So to be timid is to be fearful or to show a lack of courage. Timothy needed to hear those words and be encouraged. He was leading a huge church at the time. He was helping oversee it, helping support the local leaders. He was playing a, a massive role. He had been involved in helping plant loads of churches already. He'd done all kinds of things for God, but he still needed to be encouraged that God was with him and that he put this spirit in him of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So when we become a Christian, when we give our lives to God, God comes and lives in us by the Holy Spirit. God comes and empowers us to live for him. And the Holy Spirit is not a spirit that gives us a lack of courage uh, or to be timid. He's a spirit that enables us to live in the good of the identity that we now have in Jesus. We can courageously take responsibility to live in the good of all that God is giving us um, not because we're special, not because we're gifted, not because there's uh, something about us that's drawn God's attention to us, but simply because of who God has made us to be in Jesus, because we're his loved sons and daughters. And in that situation, he pours his spirit over our lives, and his spirit isn't one that makes us fearful. His spirit isn't one that makes us timid. God himself is the spirit who comes and pours himself into us, making us strong, making us courageous, giving us his power, giving us his love, giving us his self-discipline. So the more we welcome and enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit, the clearer it all becomes in our minds of who God has made us to be, and the more courage will rise. So courage is forged in the presence of God. So then as we begin to bring this into land, what does this look like as a culture here at Amani. What does that mean in terms of how we work that out in church family? So Emmanuel, we want people to feel backed, uh, even if they try something in faith and it doesn't come off. We want everyone to feel free to make mistakes. Not just for the sake of it, and not setting people up just to fail for, for no reason. There needs to be discernment and wisdom there, of course. But where we feel God is speaking to us and asking us to do something, that's perhaps the significant bit. Where we believe God's prompting us to go after something in Him. Where we believe God's challenging us to do this. Or where we realise that we need to live like this to line up to the Bible. And we're courageous and step out into that. We want to back you 100%. 
be right behind you. And sometimes it won't work out. Sometimes we'll think that God's speaking to us about something and it won't quite work out how we think it's going to. But do you know what? I think if we're genuinely seeking to live in obedience with God, he loves those moments. I think he adores those moments and is celebrating with us, even when it doesn't work out how we think it's going to. Because actually, he's much more interested in our obedience and faithfulness to him, our good-heartedness towards him, than the exact results. Ultimately, if it fails, that's okay. You're seeking to step out and follow after God. God backs you and will back you. A culture where if God's giving you big dreams, you aren't going to get shouted down if you share them, but will lovingly help you discern whether they're from God or not. And if they are, we want to back you in going for them. Whether there's much we can practically do to help you or not, it's a different question. But we want to be able to encourage and support people to pursue after what God is speaking to them about. So we borrowed a line um, before from King's Arms Church in Bedford where they use this line to help them communicate this kind of culture, which is failure is an option, timidity is not. Which is inspired in part by the verse from Timothy that we looked at a moment ago. I believe that doesn't just reflect the kind of culture we're going here for here at Emmanuel, but I believe that reflects the heart of God for all his children. The heart of Father for us as his beloved children. Lots of amazing examples of courage in the Emmanuel family on display already. We've seen uh, the courage displayed right from the beginning of this church plan for people to move, to come and be part of it. The courage of people uh, deciding to go through with that even when it didn't make financial sense. People choosing to move uh, even when they didn't have a job yet, but just going for it anyway. God has, there's been, God has helped people be very courageous for this church to even exist in the first place. And since then, there's been loads of examples of courage on display in this family. Every time someone chooses to be honest and vulnerable about something they need to work on in their life, that's a great example of courage. Every time someone's chosen to step out in a new gifting, perhaps preaching for the first time, Perhaps someone who's come to the front to share something. Perhaps someone who's uh, dared to speak out in their uh, home group for the first time about something that God's doing in their life. All examples of courage on display. Choosing to show hospitality to others, even when it's not something that comes very naturally to us. Going for it with having faith conversations with our friends. Daring to share with those around us about the most important thing in our lives. I'm really encouraged to hear more and more stories of people being really bold and courageous for sharing with their work colleagues and friends. So courage, overcoming fear, it will look different for every one of us. We'll fear different things and we'll require courage to overcome in different areas of our life. I think just to highlight a couple more areas um, of where, what courage might look like, particularly perhaps in things that you might not think so much of as courage. It takes courage to confess sin. And that's an area that's perhaps like, less commonly thought about as being courageous, but it's such a courageous thing when we dare to confess sin to God and perhaps even to others because we know we need help and we'll just fall back into the same thing if we don't seek the help of others who love us and care for us and what's his right. It takes courage to ask for forgiveness when we know we've hurt someone else. It takes courage to not put up a front if we're struggling, but to be honest and vulnerable and seek out the help of others. It takes courage to refuse to be involved in things in the workplace which you know aren't right and go against the, everything you stand for in Jesus. It takes courage just to stand on the truth of the Bible in a society where it's increasingly unpopular to do so. So while courage might look different for each one of us. As we come into land, I want to just highlight one area where I think courage is going to be needed for all of us as we seek to live out our heart um, to see many, many people come to know Jesus in the city, which is sharing the good news of Jesus. I I'm yet to come across anyone who follows Jesus who doesn't find that they need a bit of courage or feel a bit fearful when it comes to how they might share their faith, how they might talk, to G talk about Jesus with their friends. I think that's one area where we all need courage. Um, we've heard in the, the last few weeks, um, so back uh, a couple of Sundays ago, Rachel here shared beautifully uh, about how she's been doing uh, studying the Bible with one of her friends. 
It takes real courage to end up in that kind of scenario. For that to be initiated in the first place and the courage to keep it up and keep going and keep looking through the Bible with a friend like that. Someone else from Emmanuel had the opportunity the other week. Um, I was hearing their story of how they were sharing with one of their work colleagues about Psalm 23 after we looked at it in Emmanuel groups that week. It's just really encouraging to hear these little stories of where people are taking the opportunity to step out in faith uh, and really own Jesus with those around them. We're never looking to ram this message down people's throats or kind of in any sense force people to be interested if they're not. But there is a real call on our lives from Jesus to be authentic about the fact that most, well, Jesus is hopefully the most important thing in our lives and it's the authentic thing to do to then share him with those around us. It's pretty unauthentic when we've got friends who we've known for a long time and we never get to talking to them about Jesus. It's not very real, it's not, uh, I'm challenging myself with what I'm saying here as much as anyone else. And I think also, I've just been struck again this week by the scale really of what lies ahead of us. While prayer walking this week is part of the rise, I, I kind of became freshly aware that within five minutes walk of my house, I, I can get to flat blocks, and there's lots of them, that each house probably around 100 people. And you kind of stand there in some areas, just like five minutes walk from my house, and I'm thinking, there are literally, there are just so many people <laughs> living really close to where I live, and the very, very vast majority of them don't know about Jesus. Yeah, they might have some clue about the Christian faith, but I think the thing I find again and again, there are so many people who never actually had someone explain to them what the gospel is, what the Christian message really is. That we have a saviour who loves us, who loves them, who is for them, who wants them to be restored to their father who created them. It's just wonderful good news and so many people, they might be vaguely aware of what they think Christian stands for, but I think so many people have never heard about Jesus really in another sense. So let's not water down what God's calling us to do. It's going to take incredible courage if we're going to really pursue the heart that we've got to see many, many people meet Jesus, for many, many people to be transformed. Um, by his life transforming presence to know his peace and flourish and his purposes. That's going to take real courage. God has big promises for us as a church, and we don't want to like, adjust them or water them down. Right at the heart of that is that we have a desire to see many, many people meet Jesus. So, just to summarize where we've gone God's faithfulness, I, like, three reasons to be courageous. God's faithfulness over our lives so far. Uh, walking in obedience and love with Jesus, we can know that courage will come when we do that. Thirdly, God is with you. And also, we look to the key thing around how courage is forged in God's presence. And while we recognise that it looks different for each one of us, we want to create a culture here at Emmanuel which says that failure is an option, timidity is not. Where there is space to give things a go in obedience to God's. And Two questions just to land this, and then we're just going to sing again as we close in a moment. Actually, do it. Roger and Morgan want to start to yeah, get ready. That would be great. So two questions. One quite a broad one, just to get you thinking. Where in your life do you need to show courage currently? We all feel fear about different things. I suspect for most of us, there's at least one area of our life where... We know we need to act and uh, move in courage at the moment, where we might be fearful of something and we need to step beyond that to walk in obedience to God. And secondly, who can you tell about Jesus this week? Who can you tell about Jesus this week? Maybe it's someone you've spoken to about your faith before, maybe it's someone you know really quite well, and you just recognise that it's perhaps becoming a little bit inauthentic that you've never really explained to them about the most important thing in your life. Perhaps you've known to them that you go to church and told them a little bit about uh, your faith in some way, but you've never really explained to them why Jesus matters so much to you. Who can you tell about Jesus this week? So, as we sing, we're just going to sing a song in a moment. 
that um, talks very clearly about strength rising as we wait on God's. Bit of an old classic. Um, I think just to help us lean into that point that strength really does come when we wait on God. Psalm 27, just one final uh, scripture as we close. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I think just as, just as I put those two challenging questions up there, I just felt I just needed one more comment as we close to be really clear about the source of courage. This isn't something we work up or try harder on. This isn't something where you go, oh, Dave's asking me these questions, I need to do this, I really need to do this. It's not something like that. It's where you wait on God, he comes and meets you in it. Yes, there will be moments when we need to step out in faith and push beyond our fears, but we know that when we do that, because we're God's children, because he loves us, because he's for us, he will meet us in there and courage will come. Courage is forged in God's presence. So let's sing, uh, enjoy God's presence, let courage rise in our hearts, and then I'd just love to pray for us.